Now, are you men ready for your super special secret assignment? Ahoy, mateys, and welcome to another episode of I'm Ready, a SpongePod Squarecast. My name is Captain Eric, and we are continuing our sail through the third season of SpongeBob SquarePants. Today's episode is Wet Painters, uh, certainly one that, that is, is close to home if you have ever helped anyone paint a room in their house. Uh, it is the first half of the 50th episode of SpongeBob SquarePants, and it first premiered on May 10th, 2002. Honestly, before getting into any of the staff of this episode, I gotta say, with with this episode being the 50th episode of SpongeBob SquarePants, this accompanied with the Krusty Krab training video may be the best episode combo in SpongeBob history. I I don't know. We you know, anytime the the seasons have come to an end, I've gone through and, and made official rankings of the episodes, but that's a, a, another honest list to make is when it comes to these episodes pairings what are the the top 10 what are the top 25 episode pairings in spongebob history i i think this has to rank up there um even if you don't think it's number one a i imagine this has to hit most top 10 of spongebob fans out there uh if you're making a list like that uh I feel like even maybe that's generous. I feel like even most people would have this in their top five, but this is still quite a way to kick off the 50th episode of SpongeBob SquarePants. Our writers for this episode are C.H. Greenblatt, Kaz, and Mark O'Hare. Our storyboard artists are Caleb Muner and Carson Kugler. Our storyboard directors are C.H. Greenblatt, uh, directing for his very first time, I believe, in, in SpongeBob SquarePants, storyboard directing here. C.H. Greenblatt and Kaz take those duties as our storyboard directors. Our animation director is Frank Weiss, and our creative director is Derek Dryman. Uh, Wet Painters, as I had previously mentioned, is... If you have the experience of painting a room, then this is an episode that certainly comes close to home. Almost every step of the painting process is shown in this episode other than buying of paint, you know, finding a color and whatnot. That, that's all pretty much done at the behest of Mr. Krabs. Uh, but uh, for some people, painting is a very simple process. I have seen some videos on Instagram and TikTok of, of these people who just, when you put a roller in their hands and the smallest amount of paint, they are able to just uh, cover a room in like 10 seconds. It's absolutely crazy. I, on the other hand, you could give me four hours and the best brushes and rollers, and for some reason, I have the basics down, but just for some other ways of painting, I, it's just trouble. I absolutely need help when it comes to that. I it's weird. I'm 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 into art. I'm into painting and paint, but when it just comes to like the, the room application of paint, I, I'm too precise for my own good, and and I I require you know some expert assistance because. Uh, it, for as simple as painting is, you certainly don't want to mess up. And when it comes to house paint, you want to make sure you get the right interior kind of paint. You want to make sure you're, you know, putting on the correct amount of layers. And, you know, and, and the trim of the room is certainly important. And, hey, if you don't care and it's a sloppy job, it is what it is. But uh, like I said, I'm, I'm too picky for my own good uh, when it comes to painting. Now, for, for this episode this process is something i uh would not be able to handle but before we get to the painting we got to start our story all the way back at the crusty crab uh the beginning of this episode is another day where apparently it is just slow at the crusty crab we have been told before that the crabby patty is is an important piece of bikini bottom it's part of the foundation of this world without it we have seen in Sponge Out of Water, the, the entire place will turn into a post-apocalyptic nightmare. It, it's it's super important, but we have found ourselves yet again in another episode where it's just a slow day at the Krusty Krab. Nobody, nobody wants to eat, or everybody is just too full or too sick. For whatever reason, they're not able to find customers. We've seen some gimmicks in the past from 
the Krusty Krab on how to attract more customers. We've seen the salad bar. We've seen, you know, shows put on. This time around, SpongeBob and Patrick have taken a page out of the world of Jackass and decided that it is time to bring on extreme stunts to attract new customers. The, the stunt in question is apparently if you take two Krabby Patties and slide them on the ground, you can kind of jump on them and they will, they will not, the meat will not smush under your weight, especially uh, the, the weight of Patrick. Uh, and you'll be able to glide along the, the floor as if they were, you know, ice skates. They're, they're doing this and running into walls, knocking windows off of walls and breaking as if they were paintings, which it's one of my favorite visual gags. In SpongeBob, it's just one of those ones that that makes me chuckle. It, it did as a kid. It's a, such a small moment, but I also feel like it's such a a simple gag that anybody can get it. And it's it's so quick and comes in and out out of nowhere that you you might have to watch the episode a few times to truly appreciate the the joke there. But I don't know uh, enough about the window there. I could talk a lot about that the window. I really like that gag here. I don't know why Mr. Krabs, of course, doesn't like being disturbed in, in whatever he ever does in his office. Um, it really doesn't matter. He could be doing something related to being a manager at the Krusty Krab. He could be doing something completely off the clock. He doesn't like being disturbed. So he comes out really angry at SpongeBob and Patrick here uh, and wonders why they are pretty much destroying the inside of the Krusty Krab and destroying themselves. SpongeBob claims it's a ritual to attract more customers and pretty much throws uh, Squidward under, not really throw Squidward under the bus, but we find out that it was, it was pretty much Squidward's idea for these two to just start hurting each other and hurling themselves at the walls to attract more customers. He's not wrong. I, I gotta say, if I heard that there was a restaurant in town that the employees were literally throwing themselves into the walls for, you know, to attract new customers. I, I'm depending on the kind of food I might stop in. I'm not saying I wouldn't. I, I'm just saying that the possibility is, is certainly there. It, it, it's an attractive offer for me to come into your restaurant. I, I'm not. <laughs> and I also said the kind of food, like if, if, if it's the kind of food that I wouldn't eat, then I, I don't even think the, idea of people hurling themselves into walls and and doing jackass style stunts would get me to go in and watch it but if if it's a if it's a win-win situation if i can see that happening and get food that i would eat hey i i might take you up on that so squidward's got a an idea here that that might be worth looking into down the road uh, now, Mr. Krabs, though, it's a slow day. He doesn't apparently need SpongeBob behind the grill to make any Krabby Patties. He has a better idea for him, a super special secret assignment. And if you screamed assignment right after that, you're one of the good ones. Uh, he's talking about getting out of the Krusty Krab, coming over to his house, and painting the inside of his home. Uh, apparently just the first floor, though. Now... There's one thing to know about this job is that it may seem simple and SpongeBob and Patrick are certainly excited to, to dig into helping out Mr. Krabs, but there's something to know about this paint that they are using. It is extremely permanent. It, there's no way to get this paint off. Apparently I don't know why Mr. Krabs would want to have, you know, use paint like that when, you know, yeah, interior paint, you don't want to get that on, on objects and, and the floor, it can certainly ruin things, you know, paint of any kind. But why would you want paint like that anyway? And now, of course, if you've seen this episode, spoiler warning, this paint isn't really that permanent. But why just in, in the in the thought process, I know it's a lie, but in the in the thought process, I, if I were SpongeBob and Patrick, I would immediately question Mr. Krabs like, OK, why do you have this? Why are we using this? Is there a specific reason? Uh, and and especially in the fact that like I'm not, you're not paying me to do this job, so I have every right to question this decision that it, it affects how I do the job and affects the pressure of the job. So I have every right to question what what is going on here. Um, now, if you have ever painted a room, it is certainly a process. Now you have to buy the paint. Mr. Krabs has already done that here. Well, you obviously have to decide on a color first. 
Mr. Krabs' interior it seems to be unpainted, just completely classic wood. And the inside is very much nautical-themed. I don't want to say, like, old man, but when you look inside, there's a lot of pictures. There's a lot of hanging knickknacks. It looks honestly like a the inside of, like, a nautical-themed restaurant. There's just that much on the walls. I, I, I've only been in, like, three or four homes in my entire life where people had that many knickknacks on the walls from, like, top to bottom using their wall space to show off not just photos which mr krabs certainly has a lot of when we when we first see the inside of his home uh we see immediately to our left like a picture of a pirate uh i i like uh i like that picture that's an enjoyable picture there but there's a few other photos but beyond the photos there's anchors there's telescopes there's fish there's uh, ships and bottles there's yeah, tridents and hooks, and there's so many items in his room. Just even on the left side, we haven't even panned over uh, to the to the middle here. He has a giant. I'm guessing I don't. It's a statue of the money symbol. I don't know if it's a light. I I would like to think it's a light that he has there. That'd be pretty cool if it glows green. Uh, he has big lures on the wall, which I don't know are, are trophies of his that he's gotten. You know, he, remember, Mr. Krabs knew a lot about the hooks and knew about their dangers. So that's really interesting that he's hanging up a lure on the wall, maybe a lure that he, he helped cut off of a line one day. Like he was getting maybe he was even getting pulled up by that thing and, and cut the line and, and kept the uh, lure as a souvenir, hung it up on his wall. That's actually a pretty cool idea. But beyond all of that, there is also several harpoons on his walls and even harpoons right near pictures of whales in other shots of his house throughout the episode i think it's very interesting given his his daughter pearl is a whale you'd think there may be i don't know would be a bit more sensitivity there on on the the harpoons being in the house uh, but but I don't know their relationship. I mean, we know their relationship, but when it comes to, you know, the stuff being in the home, I, things certainly do not get that deep on SpongeBob SquarePants. But, you know, who, who knows what the uh, the the conversations are about those items in, in his home? Uh, we, we get other photos. We get a bookshelf. He has bags of money, which I imagine just have to be decorative. They're, not, you know, not real cash just hanging out in his house. Uh, we, we do see later on in the episode, he also has a fully stocked and working vending machine in his home. I imagine if he has guests over, he's not supplying anyone with snacks. Like you, you have to you know pay for snacks for yourself. I, I guess thank you for uh, making the, the you know, ease of access to buying snacks by having a vending machine in your house. Like, thank you for that. But I, you know. Like, that's kind of petty to have that, but it is Mr. Krabs we are talking about here. I, I, I love the decor in his home. Now, I do want to point out one thing. If you look to the right of the stairs, to the captain's quarters, clearly to uh, to Mr. Krabs' room, right to the right of the stairs, right behind the bottle of grog on the table, you can see a picture of Squidward that Mr. Krabs has on his on his wall and you can see Squidward is wearing his crusty crab hat and you can kind of see Squidward smiling in the photo. I think it's really adorable that Mr. Krabs has a has a picture of Squidward in his house and as we've seen later on in in movies and episodes and other projects how much he cares about SpongeBob and he clearly cares about Squidward too. He has this love for his crew that, that at the Krusty Krab and for as, you know, stingy and mean Mr. Krabs can be sometimes. It's really it's really sweet at the end of the day. But I have to relate to Mr. Krabs here uh, in my times in in management um, in various, you know, businesses and whatnot, you do make a connection with with your your team, your employees, whatever you want to, to call them. Uh, some, you know, become work friends and some become, you know, hey, a, a bit stronger than that. You you work with, you know, for a few years, you get to know each other maybe on a, on a closer level. And uh, I, I certainly have felt that feeling with certain people out there. 
uh, some some of which probably still listen to this podcast. So if you are if you are out there, part of my my work family, like shout out to you, uh, love you for life. You you can make very strong connections with those that you work with, and it's not a bad thing to to have that association that that connection. I mean, that's where you met that person. So uh, I, I think it's really sweet that Mr. Krabs has that picture on his wall. It's, it's certainly a nice touch. And it, it's, it's obscured by the bottle. It's in a quick shot. It's one of those, like, you got to pause the episode, blink and you miss it moments. I like that it's there. It's, it's certainly a comforting feeling. Now, when they get in this room, SpongeBob and Patrick immediately realize that they have a, a massive job on their hands. Not only... Are they tasked to paint this entire room? But now they have the job of moving all of Mr. Krabs' items off of the wall to paint the walls. Now, they decide to just not take any of the items off of the walls and paint around them, which I have to imagine for certain items are just going to be virtually impossible. For example, in several shots here, we see a lot of uh, uh, ships in bottles hanging on the walls and these these bottles are just on little like stumps and if you paint around those bottles they're clear you're going to clearly see the old non-painted wood behind it which by the way Mr. Krabs has chosen to go with a white aesthetic over his uh, just classic old school wood look I imagine you know the fact that he is pretty much at the Krusty Krab every day that the interior of the Krusty Krab is just too similar to his home interior so that's that's why he's changing it up and you know he'd rather paint the inside of his house white than the inside of the crusty crab that's that's my ongoing theory but um now so yeah there it's just impossibility to paint around all of these items it, you unfortunately would have to take most of these items off like it's it's a tedious job and it kind of sucks that mr crabs put them in this situation uh i i it really don't you know, uh, it, it sucks. I would not want to be in their situation and, and have the job to take all of these items down. It, it certainly wouldn't be a fun day, especially in the fact that they're not even getting paid. It's not, Mr. Krabs isn't even like buying them lunch or anything, which I, you know, most times I've assisted friends and family. That's that's like the bare minimum. Buy a pizza or something, offer food, offer a drink. There's nothing here. There's nothing on the table for them. But anyway... We go through every little aspect of painting, as I mentioned earlier. What's the first step? Well, we got to open up these these paint cans. We got to spread out some tarps, which they have these very small tarps, and and there's not much coverage. Either every joke here is is set up to the extreme or to the minimal, and and that's the best kind of comedy for SpongeBob is when you take these very relatable moments and you either just make it extremely silly. Or you go to just the far extreme of, of the idea of, like, how wacky can we make this go? And they take full advantage of each situation. For example, well, what kind of brush do you use with paint that is apparently very permanent? And speaking of that permanent paint, the issue being that with all of these knickknacks on the walls, Mr. Krabs has threatened SpongeBob and Patrick that if they get paint on any single item, in his house, he will uh, apparently rip off their bottoms, their butts, have them stuffed and mounted above his fireplace, which, uh, you know, I don't know for for those of you out there who are familiar with the uh, taxidermy. No, it's just Chuck Testa. Uh, to some, it, it is an art form. And uh, to, to Mr. Krabs, it's a. It's an easy threat to his employees and friends of his employees. I don't know the practicality of taking off one's bottom and, and having that stuffed and mounted, placed on a plaque, but the, the visual of it is certainly hilarious. I, I got to give them that. The visual of it is funny when we eventually get to just see that as a, as a possibility when the, when the two characters think about it. But Mr. Krabs has set this, this very harsh threat on these two characters very unfair, especially with the the fact that a you know later on in the episode we we do find out that the the threats are are really not needed because the the paint isn't as permanent as we are led to believe. But you know, like these characters are doing this for free. This isn't uh, you know 
This isn't like they're getting paid a lot of uh, money to do this. They're not even getting lunch. But anyway, back to the current job at hand, when you have this permanent paint in front of you and you are not supposed to get it on any of the knickknacks that are surrounding all of the walls, what kind of brush do you use? You obviously can't use a roller, and the brush that SpongeBob pulls out is is too massive. It's It's a very thick, bristled brush. So SpongeBob decides to take out a handle, a little brush handle, stick it in one of his nostrils, and pull out a single nose hair to use as his brush. Patrick follows suit, which you'd think, well, Patrick doesn't have a nose. Well, apparently you haven't looked closely to Patrick's face because if you notice, he's got a small hole right under his eyes that I guess is his nose. Patrick sticks in the uh, the little the little brush handle and pulls out not just a single hair, but a Don King level amount of hair out of his nose. And there's a, there's a single tear com- coming out of his eye. It's just, once again, one of those, one of those little visual gags that just lands each and every time. I, I love that they, they took that moment. Uh, each SpongeBob and Patrick have a moment to shine for almost every, every level of painting here. Each of them kind of gets a crack at throwing a joke out there. Either SpongeBob is being too careful and Patrick is just being too destructive this entire time. SpongeBob, now in several shots, we get different aspects of how tall Mr. Krabs' walls are, which it's a cartoon. That's kind of what they're supposed to do. So we get massive shots where it just looks like this is going to be the worst job ever if you have a single nose-haired brush to use with this permanent paint spongebob is absolutely paranoid this entire time of getting this paint on any of the items on the wall and is stalling for time before he even puts the first drop we get a classic spongebob time card gag the one hour later the two hours later the three hours later of spongebob waiting but we get an even better time card gag because right after the three hours later time card shows up Patrick removes the time card from the screen and is completely nervous because he is all out of time cards. So it's time for SpongeBob to hurry up. I love this fourth wall breaking gag. It is certainly one that would feel very much at home in the world of chowder. So I I have to imagine that C.H. Greenblatt had a hand in writing that joke. Uh, Maybe, you know, Kaz uh, certainly could as well. And uh, Mark O'Hare, like, absolutely, you know, any one of them could have written that joke, but that just feels like a joke that was certainly continued on very much fourth wall breaking in in Chowder. You would see that in almost every other episode, uh, jokes of that level. And it's, it's, it's just one of the most memorable SpongeBob jokes here because as iconic as the time cards are, everybody remembers that time Patrick pulled it off of the screen that first time. Uh, after SpongeBob puts the the drop of paint on the wall, he is very satisfied with his little his little painting he's done. But apparently, that was a lot of paint in that one drop, because after the paint is on the wall, it starts dripping down the wall and onto certain objects. Now, before it touches any of the objects, SpongeBob is able to uh, blow the paint out of the way. Uh, down the wall, avoiding all of the paintings, all of the little knickknacks, until it is able to be stopped by SpongeBob's trusty uh, hairdryer that I'm guessing he carries around with him, or just has, but, you know, we're dealing with cartoon rules here. I absolutely am for it. I just love that he has it. And right after this, we get um, one of my just favorite little nuanced SpongeBob moments. And it's anytime SpongeBob is just proud of himself in, in a moment... He 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 kind of lowers his eyes. He kind of squints a little bit, and he just you know proclaims to himself. Yeah. It's so hard to explain why I love it so much, but it's just one of those little perfect chef's kiss type moments for me when it comes to SpongeBob SquarePants. I mean, uh, uh, SpongeBob, you what what are your thoughts? You you think this is a, an incredibly good podcast, right? Yeah. Thank you, thank you. That that really means a lot. Uh, now I'm not sure if I truly prefer the white paint over the the brown aesthetic of Mr. Krabs' home. I really like the the nautical look of his house, but I cannot deny that the white paint just really makes all of the knickknacks that he's hanging pop on the wall. Now, as SpongeBob may have dried that little drip on the wall and thinks he's out of the clear, 
what we get instead is a massive paint bubble that has formed from the the hair dryer hitting the bottom and with a giant paint bubble you can imagine when that thing pops it is going to send paint all over the room if you have ever helped anyone paint a room or have painted a room yourself then you know that that you no matter what how much you prep you, know, you have to wear dirty clothes you have to wear clothes that you're gonna like definitely be fine with getting paint on because there is no avoiding paint getting on things that it's not supposed to be at least i'm not saying i'm like finger painting over here and it's that messy but especially when you're using rollers like the the ability for the paint to splatter is always there you gotta you gotta take your time you gotta be careful uh so with with a paint bubble the, the 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 amount of paint that is going to come off that thing is just is probably bad and spongebob admits that it, we're already in a bad situation how could things possibly get worse this is where patrick comes in the, throughout this episode as i mentioned he has been the destruction to spongebob's care throughout this episode and decides yeah yeah well it could get worse if i pull out my bubble wand dip it in the paint and make a equally big second paint bubble in the room so now SpongeBob's freaking out, like, well, how could things possibly get any worse? And now Patrick, with just zero regard to the situation, or just is going to do what a cartoon character is going to do, and, you know, hey, things worked out in the end, because as Patrick throws an air pump into these air bubbles, which have now formed into one giant bubble, and, and Patrick is blowing it up to massive proportions as this thing pops and sends paint all over the walls, avoiding all of the knickknacks and perfectly painting the inside of Mr. Krabs' home. It's one of my favorite sequences, actually, in SpongeBob that have nothing to do with the comedically or the writing, just visually. I love when the paint splashes all over the walls. I love the the moment where the paint it, uh, attaches to the wall like a, a puzzle, you know, where different pieces are filling up. I, I love that little sequence. I love when SpongeBob comes off of the wall and he leaves, you know, his imprint as the paint had, you know, went on the wall around him. And then after he leaves the wall, it kind of extra drop comes in and fills in that extra spot. It's it's a perfect cartoon physics moment where everything works out in the end, except as they are cheering themselves and patting on each other's backs over the job well done. SpongeBob notices a rough situation that they find themselves in. This is where the episode has now come into phase two of its plot. Phase one was painting the room. Now that the room is painted, we now find ourselves in phase two where SpongeBob has noticed that on the wall on Mr. Krabs' very first dollar lies a little spot of paint, the smallest spot of paint where the camera has to zoom in like four or five or six times into this dollar to notice just like if you took a pin drop to place it on this dollar. And, and I'm I'm even saying if you took obviously a human pin down to their world, that would be a, a, a small, you know, not, that would be a big point. That's the sea needle. Think about that. I, I'm talking about think about a pin drop to to our size that relative to spongebob and patrick that small even smaller than that a comedically small amount of paint is on this dollar spongebob is freaking out about it and patrick's like i i really don't think there's anything we need to freak out about this is one of those classic situations that is very uh, very relatable in which we can all think about a situation where in hindsight it probably would have been better for you to not do anything or to just move on or avoid it and the the second you try to to fix something and you make it worse it just can take a small situation and turn it into a big situation and that's what we end up finding ourselves in because as where spongebob and patrick should have just walked away then and there i don't think mr krabs would have noticed that little drop or if he eventually would have I mean, everything would have been fine. But instead, SpongeBob has to try to wipe the paint off on the dollar and just completely covers the entire dollar so now it is covered as a completely silver dollar. There's not even any of the green really coming through. 
And now we find ourselves with this this completely painted dollar with this permanent paint to which Patrick, you know, comes out with the fact that every paint comes off with something. I that I now I don't know if that is 100% true because there is bound to be very permanent paints out there that you just can't get off. I, I imagine that has to exist. But I, when it comes to just the, the interior paint, like that, Patrick is absolutely right. And he ends up being right in the end. But they end up going with a nice little list of things to try, one of which is the laundry. Second is is sanding, which I wouldn't try on anything that's paper. I imagine sanding it would just ruin the dollar, but they try sanding and the dollar is fine. They end up trying a fire hose, which is uh, something you shouldn't be messing with, and, and the power of that hose certainly is not a fun experience. But uh, it, what is concerning is after that, they, they go from uh, uh, using actual tools here to just beating up one another with a bunch of devices, including technology. Which, of course, when, when one uses technology, the, the best use of a computer is to just physically use the computer to, to beat down items on a table. I mean, that is kind of the best use of a computer, in my opinion. I know <laughs> in saying that, it's like, well, you're using a computer to record this podcast right now. Well, all right, fair enough. But I can also admit that I'm totally misusing my computer. I'm I'm fully aware that I'm misusing it right now. Better uh, compared to its better uses as a as a hammer. But uh, they use all of these these you know devices and physical beatings, and of course throughout all of it, which once again is I, I mentioned jackass earlier in the beginning of this episode. It's kind of funny that we get to this level of fire hoses being shot at at, at one another and and Sanders sanding off each other's hands and beating up one another. And it's just, it's kind of funny. There's maybe a correlation there. But now we're at a moment where it is setting in that the paint is in fact permanent and they are certainly in a pickle at this moment in time. Patrick p proclaims at this moment that he pretty much gets really angry over the situation and brings up that you could literally take any dollar and, and put it up on the wall. And Mr. Krabs you know, wouldn't know the difference, neither would anyone else. I, I don't know if that's concerning that I imagine Mr. Krabs earned that dollar a couple decades ago that Bikini Bottom or, you know, whoever is, is making the, the bills here haven't changed up the designs at all in in decades to the point that Patrick is claiming that you literally could take out any other dollar and place it up on the wall and you wouldn't know the difference. And to SpongeBob, that's a genius idea. Patrick takes out a dollar and as mentioned earlier comes across the the vending machine that Mr. Krabs just happens to have in his house that is for guests and you know what I think ultimately is the, other than the painting is is the reason why he even wanted to allow Patrick in his house because he's like well th that guy's probably going to buy out that vending machine because immediately Patrick finds a dollar and just wants to use it in the vending machine we get this nice little back and forth of a SpongeBob trying to get Patrick to to keep the dollar out obviously so they can hang that up on the wall you know to keep uh, Mr. Krabs uh, from freaking out. But <laughs> Mr. Patrick gets his way, gets his candy bar out of the vending machine, and now they find themselves in a really bad situation because Mr. Krabs is finally pulling up to the house to see the work that they've done. Now, SpongeBob has one final idea, and they quickly scramble to shut the lights off in the room as Mr. Krabs opens the front door. We just see the eyeballs of the two characters as they pretty much want to get out of the house uh, even before Mr. Krabs turns the lights on. They want to get out of there quickly before anything else happens. I, at this point, I can only imagine what anyone's thoughts were as to what their ideas could have been, but I don't think there's any way you could have uh, assumed any of what is to come because we we learn a little bit more about Mr. Krabs. We learn a little bit more about the ideas of SpongeBob and, and even Patrick as to what they would do in this situation. So... What happens now is, of course, we are expecting Mr. Krabs to come across his dollar. And we get a bit of, uh, of a fake out here and there where we think Mr. Krabs is coming across the dollar and, and we see him freaking out and pointing to something. And, and the freak out is never really positive. The first one, though, he, he 
Doesn't seem positive, but what he's freaking out about, to which SpongeBob and Patrick at, at each turn are immediately apologizing over, uh, is that he's impressed that they dusted his knickknacks, which I, I got to imagine because they didn't dust anything uh, during the, the paint bubble explosion as the paint was magically, cartoonishly covering all the walls that knickknacks just dusted themselves in that moment. But Mr. Krabs really appreciates that, and I, I'm glad he does. Uh, the, the second thing he freaks out about is that they painted the floor molding, which is this absolutely beautiful little floor molding of, of this little ship on, a, on, a, on waves of different sizes. And I, I got to say, though, as, as nice and appreciative of Mr. Krabs is of SpongeBob and Patrick here, I, I got to say, like, it, it would actually be harder work to not paint that floor molding with how with how uh, detailed it is. It would be easier and actually lazy to just paint over it, but hey, he's impressed and thinks it's great craftsmanship. I I think that's really funny that that he's like really impressed by that, but hey, like hey, it is what it is. I would have done that too. Um now the the third fake out here is is the funniest one and certainly a, a little eye-opening to the world of Mr. Krabs, but he uh, is upset about his uh, dull arama. Mr. Krabs has a dollarama in his house, a display of dolls, of uh, various like Raggedy Ann looking dolls, and uh, one of the dolls that just were like slightly misplaced, and that that's what he was yelling about. I don't know why he collects dolls. I, hey, he he, you're allowed to do whatever you want with your money. Uh, I'm. It's interesting that he collects something. So, uh, like I said, it's a little eye opening into the world of Mr. Krabs. We get to know a little bit about him and and his hobbies here. But of course, right after the third fake out, you got to you got to imagine he's going to run into his uh, his his first dollar. Well, what's the what's the hold up here? But what he ends up running into is a stack of paintings that are jutting out of the wall where his first dollar used to be, which is is pretty impressive that Mr. Krabs would remember, you know, where where things are. Uh, of course, I, I imagine he has to remember important items like that, like his first dollar. Now, there is a, a stack of about 15 paintings on the wall. And we don't get to see many of them. We, we get to see a small amount. The first one of which is a, a painting of a crying clown with a, a potted plant on its head. Kind of, you know, it just honestly reminds me of the crying clown in the Iron Lung painting from Rocco's Modern Life. There's an episode of Rocco's Modern Life in, in which Rocco uh, comes across the idea of a credit card. And, and honestly... It is a wonderful episode that tackles the idea of credit and just you know, being careful of of having a credit card and overspending on a credit card. But uh, one of the items that that Rocco comes across that he falls in love with is this is this painting of a sad clown in an iron lung. And I like the idea of that is just silly. And I don't know. I obviously there's no iron lung here. But any any time I see a crying clown, that's one of the first things I think about. Uh, right after that, we get a, a painting or a picture of a uh, of a race in which number twelve, a red car uh, sponsored by Kelpo, is winning. I I love the idea that there's still like a NASCAR or a stock car level races going on under sea, and that that Kelpo is a is a sponsor of a, at least a pretty pretty decent car. I mean, it's winning here. I, I also, uh, if you if you notice the colors of these cars, I, I really, it, it's just interesting to me. I, I noticed this, and, and it's, I don't know if anyone else has ever noticed this about this painting, but if you notice the colors of the cars, red, green, and then blue, and it, it's just funny because as, as I was looking at the picture, it just reminded me of, of the opening race of the first Cars movie with Lightning McQueen uh, Chick Hicks and the King, and and I don't know. You when you look at that picture, it just uh, you know comes across like that. Now, of course, this episode came out four years before Cars came out, so this certainly is not a reference whatsoever, and is is just a. Hey, it's three very popular colors. They work. They blend well with one another. It works, but it's just very interesting that a few years later we would get a very similar looking situation here with this with this painting thinking too much into it but right after mr krabs pulls that off the wall we 
We get a abstract looking painting uh, that is very much in the vein of famous painter Pete Mondrian. I would certainly look up his work because even beyond his his use of squares and, and very simple colors, usually just white, yellow, blue and red, uh, the primary colors, his his some of his early works of, of trees and landscapes are just gorgeous and just his minimalism in those his works. I, I highly recommend looking up the work of Pete Mondrian. Uh, it is well worth your time, but yeah, you get a, a small glimpse here of that painting, just as a, a bit of a gag of a, another painting on the wall. I would personally, for uh, for Mr. Krabs' sake, I would just stop there. I mean, that that one could be worth something. I don't know how you. I uh, know he clearly doesn't remember owning it, but you know, hey, stop at that one. That might be worth something. And as we go off screen to Mr. Krabs pulling off more paintings off the wall, we see a, an extremely ang anxious SpongeBob and Patrick over the the oncoming discovery of the painted first dollar but before that we go back to see a few more paintings including one that is just a, a picture of a banana I, I don't know if it's a painting or a photo but either way it's a very realistic looking banana and behind that we get an absolutely beautiful cameo by painty the pirate a character who has appeared in pretty much every single episode of spongebob squarepants an iconic character associated with the show as iconic as SpongeBob so iconic in fact that even in the most recent Super Bowl commercial associated with Paramount Plus that was advertising the more children friendly end of the service showcasing you know a few of the more popular shows that they have under their brand Dora the Explorer Avatar SpongeBob Sonic all of these characters are exploring this cave and come across Painty the Pirate on the wall and immediately you can imagine just everybody everywhere instantly knowing that character and that like need I say more when painting the pirate shows up and it's just it's one of my favorite cameos of SpongeBob SquarePants is this moment of painting the pirate just getting used in an episode. I wish it happened a bit more, but I also love that it is a special type of cameo that, you know, also just brings up thoughts of Steven Hillenburg, of course, because, hey, that is, in fact, I, I is his mouth right there being used in, in Painty the Pirate at this moment. After Painty is pulled off of the wall, we see SpongeBob himself hanging on the wall like a painting, all scrunched up to uh, to fit his body in, in the same proportions as the, the paintings were. Mr. Krabs, of course, asks SpongeBob what he's doing up there, to which SpongeBob replies that he's just hanging around. Boo! And once SpongeBob is yanked off of the wall, Mr. Krabs discovers his uh, dollar, his very first dollar, completely covered in paint. And then Patrick, doing one last ditch effort to maybe fool Mr. Krabs, coloring over the paint using a green crayon and crudely drawing the money symbols and pictures associated with money. I like that instead of drawing the clam that you see on the middle of every, you know, pretty much every bill in Bikini Bottom, Patrick instead draws a smiley face on the front. I like that's just it's kind of cute. You would, you know, just Patrick maybe doesn't care that much about money. He doesn't have the time to even look at it. I don't know if Patrick has even looked more than a second at a dollar or any currency because he just spends it right away or it just lives in his pockets or in his wallets. But yeah, maybe he doesn't even know that there's a clam on the front and just assumed it was a smiley face because money makes him happy. That was the only thing he can think about. I think that's kind of adorable and that he just happened to have a green crayon on him too. Now, of course, Mr. Krabs is in incredibly angry at this moment. This is the moment we've been waiting for. We knew that Mr. Krabs was going to find the dollar, but what we weren't expecting is the outcome of this so-called permanent paint. Because in fact, this paint is not permanent. It can be removed with saliva. Uh, which is really weird. I don't know if, if there is such a paint in the world that exists that can be removed with saliva. I wonder if I just search at a paint removed by saliva. Let's see what comes up. Why we sometimes use spit to clean paintings. Oh, well, that's interesting. Um, so I guess that happens sometimes. Uh, but yeah, I is saliva a good cleaner? 
Human saliva is a pretty good cleaning solution. Oh, great. Well, I, I don't see this as being a great paint to purchase. Why would you buy paint that can be removed by saliva? I mean, you can easily see with one with one funny joke how how much of a mistake that can be. I don't know if after the paint dries, it, it, it can't be removed. I don't know. I don't know the rules of this paint, but it's certainly a weird one. Now, after Mr. Krabs rightfully scares SpongeBob and Patrick a little bit, he licks the dollar and it cleans itself off of all of the paint and is completely fine. Mr. Krabs hangs it back up in the wall and SpongeBob and Patrick are left pretty much bewildered over this situation. And as the uh, optimist as he is, SpongeBob finds the silver lining of this gray cloud and realizes that, wow, Mr. Krabs, you, you told us that this paint was permanent so that we would be more careful with it. And, you know, I, I guess that's a skill to eat that kind of abuse and, and find the positive around it. Some people have that. Uh, I, I, I've been able to, to do that in my lifetime, you know, take something, a, a negative situation, and then upon a new perspective change, realizing that, eh, it wasn't that bad and, and kind of, you know, tossing it off. But uh, now, no, as much as you would think that was the case, it wasn't because Mr. Krabs admits to just liking to mess around with SpongeBob and Patrick and, and just was kind of uh, screwing around with them. He, he liked lying to them and liked uh, making them, you know, feel pressured over this situation. He liked trolling them ultimately and got the last laugh of this entire episode. SpongeBob and Patrick just walk off camera, just, just really angry over it. Mr. Krabs just begins to laugh and we can see over this, this montage of spit coming out of his mouth. You could see it from a mile away. The second the, the saliva bit came up all of a sudden, as magically as that paint appeared on the walls, it completely melts off of the walls, bringing Mr. Krabs back to his original situation. Just his his original walls now, possibly with just a, a wet floor. And Mr. Krabs comes to the conclusion, as we all should, that it's better to say it, not spray it. A, a very, like, dry ending to this episode, but, but also one that is very much in line with what I would expect with Chowder. So seeing the writers of this episode... Uh, it's not shocking seeing C.H. Greenblatt on there. And uh, and shout out to Kaz, who is one of my absolute favorite contributors of SpongeBob SquarePants. Uh, I, I absolutely love him. Hopefully I can meet him one day, shake his hand and thank him for the work he's done because he's putting some incredible work here. Uh, but that is Wet Painters, one of one of my favorite episodes of SpongeBob. I, I say that for a lot of them, and I say that for a lot of these early seasons, but they, they literally are very close to my heart. But this is one of those top tier episodes, certainly up there for season three. But next week is is probably my favorite episode. And, and I don't know, I, I, I want to do something special for it, but we will uh, we will see as, as the week goes on. But as always, my name is Captain Eric. Thank you for joining me this week. I really appreciate everything that you guys do. Uh, each and every one of your listens is appreciated. Every like, every comment, uh, you're all respected in my book. I hope you are all staying safe out there. Uh, please be careful with one another. For any of those listening out there in Ukraine, uh, please try to stay safe. My heart is out there for you. Uh, if there is anything that I can, I can ever do that I'm presented with, uh, in, in that situation, um, I, I'm going to be there. Um, my, my heart is over there with, with Ukraine and, uh, hopefully there will be much brighter days ahead and, uh, we can celebrate the world instead of destroying it. Uh, I love each and every one of you, a part of the ready crew. Thank you for joining me on this episode of I'm ready, a sponge pod square cast. We will see you next week. Ahoy, mateys. Nah, I just like to mess with you. I really gotta learn to say it, not spray it.